anniversary of the Good Morning Show. Yeah. It's Isn't amazing. Big stuff. Something. It is. When you really think about the scale, having become the longest running local morning show mm -hmm. in the country, that is significant. And for many of you, you've been watching perhaps that entire or yeah. the majority mm -hmm. of that 65 years. We've had such loyal viewers supporting us along the way. Yeah, it, it really is incredible. All the feedback we're getting on our Facebook pages mm -hmm. and our other social media just saying, you know, wow, you guys have been a part of my household for all yeah. of that time. Yes. And naming every anchor from, you know, <laughs> from Lee, <laughs> Lee to Connor. Connor. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So that's really something. And really yeah. special to have Sandra Hughes in here this morning uh, yeah. during our early show at 6.30. That, it, it was so cool, to, you know, to always, always having her back is, mm -hmm. is, is fun and exciting. But always hearing some of the stories that she tells and, mm -hmm. and obviously the, the history that she made and the doors and walls that, yeah. that she broke through and broke down um, were, were quite amazing. So there is yeah. a long, mm -hmm. long line of history uh, on this show. You know, after she left our set, she like, you know, was in a corner with some of the newer producers uh -huh. and it was just so <sighs> fulfilling to hear her share yes. the same stories that she shared with me that right. inspired me to our even younger and newer generation mm -hmm. of journalists. So her impact is long lasting mm -hmm. and it continues. Yeah, and yeah. she's not the only one. <laughs> no, not at all. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's, we want to dive deeper into that conversation, sure. get you involved. First, we do have to talk about a forecast because oh, yeah. there is a lot on tap as we Ooh. head into Christmas week. Boy, I mean a lot about that. Sunshine's back though, that's the good news, right? We've been looking for that, uh, although it will be back, I should say. Foggy start out the door for your Friday morning. Temperatures holding pretty steady in the low to mid 30s. Now, of course, some areas to the north and west have dropped down to around freezing or just below that in some of the outlying spots, but we're cold and foggy to to, uh, to start this morning as you look out over downtown Greensboro. Sh uh, surely and slowly, though the fog will lift, and we have mostly a sunny day of weather as we go into the middle of the day, especially toward lunchtime and into the afternoon. Cold front continues to push on by us. Of course, that's what brought us the rain yesterday, and now moving away from us allows high pressure to build in and take more control of our weather for the next few days. So we'll be quiet, but we'll still be cold heading into the weekend. Now, of course, all attention is going to turn to the week of Christmas, and you've likely seen a lot on the Internet and on social media about the potential for not only cold, but also the potential for winter weather late next week. So let me break this down just a little bit. What I'm showing you is a graphic I don't use a lot, so let me explain what you're looking at here. This is the upper levels of the atmosphere. So when we talk about the upper air pattern, we're talking about the jet stream level, or think about 30,000 feet where airplanes fly. This is the level of the atmosphere that we're looking at. And these big color differences show me temperatures. So notice as we go late next week into Thursday and Friday, notice the timestamp there on the top right of your screen. This is Friday at noon. The blues and the purples that you see sitting over our area indicate to me very cold air, but this also indicates to me a pattern favorable for winter weather. Our jet stream sets up and moves that storm track right across the Carolinas. Now, the one thing I can guarantee next week is that it's going to be cold and we're going to have a cold Christmas. So if you've been looking for that, the chances of you having that are very, very good right now. The one thing I'm not very confident in is the potential for a winter storm to form. Now, models and more of them now over the last 24 hours are starting to lead on to the fact a storm could form off the coast late next week in that Thursday to Friday time frame. And if it links up with our cold air, some models are, yes, giving us snow in that Thursday to Friday time frame. Again, I'm not ready to be confident in that, and that's definitely not a guarantee. So here's your no hype headlines. Yes, it's going to be cold. For Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, very easily could have morning lows in the teens with afternoons in the 30s. We will have a pattern favorable for winter weather. Our jet stream will be more active, which means we'll likely have more chances at bat to get a system that could produce <clears throat> could produce winter weather. So that storm could form in that time frame, but we don't know if it will or not just yet. We are watching that closely and of course we'll let you know as we learn more, but it's something we're watching very closely over the next several days. For today though, patchy fog this morning, sunshine in upper 40s this afternoon, feel colder than that though with a breeze as that cold front pulls away from us. The weekend will be quiet and chilly with afternoon highs in the 40s and then we're dry and quiet to kick off next week, but things could get a little busier toward the end of your Christmas week. Although if you're looking for a white Christmas, that doesn't look likely. Anything white for Christmas would be anything left over from a storm late next week, which again, we don't know about yet, but Christmas is going to be cold. I can guarantee that.
Well, this will warm you right on up. A reason to smile this morning today is the Good Morning Show's 65th anniversary. It all started back December 16th, 1957, and you know this man very well. Mm -hmm. Lee Kynard started the Good Morning Show, and it's now the longest running local morning show in the country. In 1985, his friend Sandra Hughes joined him at the desk, making history in her role and becoming an inspiration for documenting history with her award-winning reporting. So we have legends still working here. And Matthews mm -hmm. <laughs> was on the Good Morning Show for, I don't know, 30-some years. He's off today, but we asked you to share your comments, your pictures, your memories of the Good Morning Show, and we got a few in, so let's take a look at some of these. This is from Robin Stevens, um, who is now a friend of mine, and she uh, started off as a viewer of the Good Morning Show, and we just became really close ever since then. There, Aww. She is with our Eric Chilton uh, taking some photos, so she, she sent in some photos. This was on my um, bridal a shower day so oh, uh, yeah I started out <laughs> just as you know kind of um, I did an event for her and we just became friends and so she sent these pictures and look how young mm. I was I love that awesome and look how young Eric is <laughs> <laughs> you're still young yes oh, you. both of you still look amazing all right here are some more comments sent in a viewer said Lee was like a member of the family they didn't cut to commercial breaks back then Lee read the messages from sponsors I remember him cracking up with laughter reading the Playtex nurser commercial he lost his composure <laughs> <laughs> while trying to read the line most like mother herself. I was a kid, so celebrity dissolving into laughter really stuck with me. Awesome. <laughs> All right, happy 65th Good Morning Show. I'm like Tracy and watched when I was a little girl. What a fantastic team. Lee, Sandra, and Ed. My boyfriend picks on me because I always say, Eddie, did Eddie <laughs> say that for the weather? <laughs> I love y'all and watch y'all every morning. I teach elementary school in Rockingham County and have had the pleasure of meeting Tracy and Ed. What great assets to the community. Mm. Love y'all. Happy 65th. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Um, let's see. Claudia said, I was fortunate enough to be invited to interview with Lee years ago. I showed up in an all-white outfit. The look on the cameraman's face was clear. I had made a bad choice. <laughs> Uh, Claudia goes on to say, Lee was very gracious and made me feel comfortable, even though I was wreaking havoc on the cameras, apparently. <laughs> well, you know what, Claudia, just showing up and waking up and getting here <laughs> early in the morning is you know, worthy of an award itself. Sure is. <laughs> that is so funny. Gosh, and we have just been so blessed to mm -hmm. have had yeah. Sandra Hughes in our studio this morning with us. We talked about it a little bit mm -hmm. on the air. She is just a bright light. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's it's her personality that has made her such a legend in this mm -hmm. community. Oh, yeah. She talked a little bit with us on the air and even behind the scenes about the adversity she mm -hmm. had in starting her career mm -hmm. here, becoming the first African-American woman to have her own talk show mm -hmm. in the entire area and she has gone through a lot and persevered through it all mm -hmm. to become an incredible journalist and a role model to so many generations. And right. she talked a lot about how how much Lee Kiner helped her and mm -hmm. sort of guided mm -hmm. her along and took her under his wing to help her and, and, and teach her and, and watch her grow. Yeah. Absolutely. Their friendship was unmatched, yeah. you yeah. know, and it takes chemistry like that to make it work. If you're not yeah. jiving it mm -hmm. doesn't work so you know and yeah. I feel like that's what kind of continues that good morning show feel we feel like we're your friends yeah. we are oh, friends yeah. right and so it kind of helps us welcome you in every morning and you know a little bit about us I mean people can come up to me like oh how are the kids like they know everything yeah. about you know my family <laughs> they watch me get married you know it's been really part of a you know a maturation of mm -hmm. you know yeah. me on this show so uh, that's the closeness that we all feel and the connection we have feel. So imagine the legends like Lee Kynard and Sandra Hughes who have done this for decades. Sure. You know, that connection is, is still relevant today. And something else we talked about was just kind of how interesting it is to see anchors who start here and then end up spending years here mm -hmm. with this program. I mean, you just celebrated, what, your 16th? I think 17. 17th anniversary. Wow. Yeah. With 2006. Us. Yeah. I don't know. Don't do math. I mean, but <laughs> my <laughs> hurt. Do you get the point? I, I mean, I'm coming up on 10 years here. Yeah. It's just incredible how fast time flies when you really feel proud of the product you're creating. Mm -hmm. You're proud of the stories you're telling. It was 2005. 2005. Yeah. Um, but no, you're right. I mean, just you're proud of the stories you're telling. And we love you, the community members. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You know, your I remember, family. I remember talking to Ed, too. You know, he was an intern for a long time over in Raleigh at, at WRAL. That's right. And then worked yep. in Wilmington for a while. Because he went and, to state, right? He went right, to state went and to then state. Raleigh. Okay. Yep. And I remember, you know, you know, just, again, Ed, obviously a friend of all of ours, too. And even when we're off, I talk and text with Ed and we keep up. And I remember him telling me about when he got his job here. He was working in Wilmington and he flew up here. They actually flew him up here wow. on, on Piedmont Airlines, of course, then <laughs> to the interview days. for the job. He flew up here in the morning and then was back in Wilmington for the evening newscast. Wow. Um, and he said he came here, got the job here and said, I'm going to stay for two years and then I'm moving on somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And now it's been 30 plus. Right. So, I never knew that story. Yeah. I knew bits and pieces of that yeah. story, but I didn't know that whole thing. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. filling in the blank. So there was a storm brewing and his news director said, where are you? He said, I'll be right there. <laughs> and he said he was landing in Wilmington <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> Oh my well, gosh. I mean, the the biggest disappointment today was that we couldn't get Ed to come yeah, in today she was here. because, know. you know, it's his normal day off and he deserves days off. Yes. Um, but, you know, he's obviously a great member of our team. We couldn't, it would not be the Good Morning Show no. today no. without our Ed Matthews. So. Absolutely not. Love that. Yes. Man. We have several comments coming in. We'll just read a few. Rhonda said, watching Lee on snow days to see if school was canceled mm -hmm. was a favorite memory mm -hmm. of hers. We also heard from Debbie, who has been watching the Good Morning Show since she was five always wow. favorite part of the day mm. bobby watched it since he was a child too with his grandma mm. very faithfully mary loved all the great cooking memories oh, on our segments. show mm -hmm. yeah that's where it all started you know with lee and sandra cooking on the shows and then we carried it out and you know obviously we're not the best so <laughs> Yes. Therefore, no more cooking. And folks still have those cookbooks. <laughs> you know, remember the cookbooks? Yes, and remember, uh -huh. um, Jay Rickards used to have Jay's Mug Club. Oh, yeah. So it was his um, coffee mugs. Yes. And he had like 30 of them on his desk, and every month he featured a new mug that he got. Mm. Actually, I think it was every week. I mean, it was, oh, wow. it was, it was Jay's Mug Club. I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> legit. So cool. <laughs> yes, we'd love to do something cool like that. Uh, in the future, but we can't do it without you. So we really appreciate you guys watching yeah, every day for this generation and beyond. Yes, so thank great. you. All right, let's get to some morning headlines. Greensboro has a new police chief. It is Assistant Chief John Thompson who will step into the role today. Thompson began his law enforcement career in Ashboro in 1988. He joined Greensboro Police in 2003. He has served in the Vice Narcotics Division as Bureau Commander of the Patrol Division. Former Chief Brian James retired in May. He is now police chief for UNC Chapel Hill. The White House is sharing its winter COVID-19 plans. The Biden administration is now giving away at-home COVID tests again. Americans can order those for rapid tests through the website covidtest.gov. Health experts say cases are up across most of the country and they're expected to rise as people gather over the holidays. The administration is also putting personnel and equipment on standby to help with overwhelmed hospitals and nursing homes. From COVID to the flu, local health experts are encouraging the flu vaccine as cases rise. Right now, our state is in the CDC's very high category for flu spread. Novant Health is hosting a flu vaccine clinic today from 10 to 2 at Samaritan Ministries in Winston-Salem. It'll also offer free health screenings. Walk-ins are welcome. So this is a favorite of ours. Every week, Megan puts together a great list of Things that we can celebrate because there's a lot of stress, especially with the holidays in our to-do to list. Yeah, so I put together this compilation of the blessings you are seeing in your life. So let's tell me something good. Sandra got to have dinner with her son, daughter-in-law, and precious grandchildren. Always a blessing. Scott received generous promotion at work. Linda tailgated and watched the UNC Clemson game with her family. Teresa and her husband celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary and feel truly blessed. Trish is thankful for her medical miracle. She lost all vision in her left eye seven years ago and her right eye was having trouble. This week she said God showed her mercy and she's hopeful her eyesight will improve. And Jim is thankful God is good all the time. Amen. 
really quickly. Anything good you all want to share? Christian, you just came back from a trip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, got, uh, went to Disney World for a few days, and it was nice, you know, nice to get away. I haven't been to Disney World in several years. But nice to get away for a few days and kind of rest and relax. You know, holiday, holidays get busy. You know, some of our work schedules uh, get, get flipped around a little bit. So yeah. It's just nice to kind of rest and relax and take the uh, last few days of vacation and uh, mm -hmm. just kind of enjoy that. Just a couple of days away to rest and recharge. That's nice. nice. It's always nice. Yeah, what about you? Oh, so many good things. Yeah. My son finished in first place in the spelling bee, oh! so he's super excited about right. that. Good mm -hmm. job, Josiah. We were able to get through a busy week of Christmas parties and activities at school, and now we are at the weekend. Yes. So Simone has a recital tomorrow, and then I'm literally done in terms of activities wow. until Christmas. Mm. And then it wraps up, and you know, it ramps up yeah. again. But yeah. I'm thankful for yeah. the good things that have happened in my, my life, and it's literally every day there's something good. So thank you. Awesome. I love that. So I was really tickled when my son brought home his little gift baggie of crafts he had made at preschool for the parents' Christmas mm -hmm. gifts. And mm -hmm. it was just so cute to open up all the ornaments and, you know, kind of finally be at oh, that did place. Did they have his yeah. picture in it? Yes. I love those. Aww. It's in a prime spot on the tree, and he was just so proud. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. It is just and so made sweet. mama proud too. Yeah, yeah. those All are right. great moments. Yeah. All right, a final check of our forecast. Maybe not so great, depending yeah. on yeah. what you like. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sun's coming back to though. That, that's the good news for today. Sunny and breezy, so it'll be a chilly day of weather, even with temperatures in the upper 40s, feeling like the 30s at times when that wind is blowing. We're dry and chilly through the weekend, heading into the start of Christmas week. If you're looking for a cold Christmas, you will have that. But before that, we may get a system in here late next week that could produce some winter weather. I can guarantee the cold. Can't guarantee the storm system yet, uh, but we will keep eyes on it for you, watching it closely. So keep checking back for updates every day. Of course, we'll have those. We'll be here for you as uh, we iron out the details on that. We will be listening right. very, very closely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a few kids in my neighborhood who are looking forward to a lot of snow this year. So okay. we'll see if we get it. They have their first chance next week. I don't know. I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be like, Christian. Yeah. Christian. <laughs> Mother Nature knows and God knows. <laughs> I will start to bring my headphones to work next week. No, You're like, I'm blacking out the noise. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for having so much fun with us on After GMS. We are going to continue this great conversation about the 65th anniversary of the Good Morning Show on the Good Morning Show mm -hmm. at 9, which is new in its 65th year. Yes. Right? Yes. Always new and evolving. Yes, <laughs> We'll see you then. See ya.